All right, we're picking it up here. At this point, we've talked about snap and grid. What I mostly want you to understand about that is you turn them on and off together. Ortho F8, it's an important enough one that you turn it on with the snap, with the function key. Polar tracking, really good one. If you're going to leave run with any one snap on, that's probably not a bad one, especially if you're drafting orthographically where you can kind of key things in. You don't have to use the at x comma y comma z or x comma y or the at distance angle theta but you've got to know that that's what you're going to have to eventually use when you do 3d for the most part and so it's a great habit to get that established that is why i del delayed so much on the dynamic object snap obviously you can have them running all the time we like to use the shift right click Object track, we will come back to. Dynamic user coordinate system, as you really get into this, uh, I will allow some of you to kind of change your definition of X, Y, and Z. Um, dynamic input we're working on, line weight we talked about, and quick properties just kind of going to turn up a list, turn on a list. So let's go back to the dynamic input and look at how that affects changes now. How it affects not the drawing, where we can go, once again, shift, right click, object snap settings, go to the dynamic. We can either have it take polar or Cartesian, and then relative or absolute. In other words, relative typically being when you used an at from the last point, or absolute if you did not. Polar being the distance less than symbol and then the angle and the Cartesian be in change in X and change in Y. There are little tricks to switch from one to the other, but I'm going to tell you pretty much just come in here and change these settings. Um, that's what one set of settings for the dynamic input. Even more important, I would tell you, is this one right here, and this is the settings here for the dimensional input settings. That more has to do with when you're kind of changing things. In this case, I've got it set for resulting dimension and the absolute angle. Right, Resulting dimension and the absolute angle. And you can do it other things, change in length if you're trying to change things. But if you think about one of the, uh, some of the drafting we had done earlier uh, with the kind of shifting and crumbing around, this is one that probably a couple of the settings that I really would want you to really kind of gravitate towards. All right, so when grip stretching, so I guess that's what it's called. Well, we're going to do that. We've now you've got it resulting dimension, absolute angle set. Hit OK. I am going to go to pointer input, and we're going to go with a um, polar format and relative coordinates, which is probably one of the best ways to think about putting stuff in. I'm going to hit OK here. The dynamic is now on. I'm coming across, and what I'm going to do now, I'm hitting a delete key. I'm going to go ahead and draft problem 4 5 just to start mixing it up and using the dynamic and the grip. So I'm going to start by turning on the polar. Click here, left click. Now I can kind of take my hand off the mouse, and you notice here it is going first for that input. It's telling me to go. Uh, it's taking an input for the length. The length of AB was 11.29. Okay, I can just hit a return or I can tab over and change it. That draws that 11.29. Now you see it's actually letting me tab this up. The problem is, right, we actually want an angle here that's actually not one, it's 129 on the interior angle. So we want to hit an escape here. We're going to left click, if you remember, left click left click, space bar, space bar, rotate C for copy, and then the rotation is a minus 129, right? Now, escape. Now if we grab here on the end, right, and we grab, we left click again on the end, now we can go ahead and key in the distance of BC, which is 5.37, tab, return, it shortened it up, escape bar, escape, left click, left click, space, space, 
rotate C for copy. We're going to rotate minus 112, return, escape, escape, up. Oh. Escape kind of cleanses the palette. You'll see as I talk about SketchUp, there's different ways to cleanse your palette in different programs. Left click, left click. It goes first. If you remember, we asked it to put the dimension input and the pure angle. And that actually is what the angle of or the direction of that um, piece is. So right now I'm going to key in the distance of CD is 6.04. Escape, escape, left click. Left click on the end, space bar, space bar, C for copy, and your rotation now is a minus 133. Escape, escape, left click, left click, and you see it pop up. Distance DE is 3.23. Hit a return. Escape guard, escape, left click, left click on that last piece, space bar, space bar, C for copy. Hitting a space bar after the C because it knows space bar AutoCAD takes as a return. The rotation angle here is minus 166. Escape, escape, left click, left click on the end. The distance here for EF is 8.58. Escape bar. Now, we can keep doing the turns, but eventually you're going to realize that offsets are great for a lot of things. So, oh, space bar. The distance of FG is 2.41. Space bar. Click there to there. Line, shift right click, endpoint, shift right click, endpoint. Go out here, left click, left click, you see it goes to the distance, the distance of GH. GH is 6.73. Shorten that up. Same thing here, it's an offset because it's 90 degrees. Or we could go ahead. And let's not forget what we know already. Shift right click from the end point. Now watch what happens. If I just go ahead and use my at, it may or may not work. So I'm going to go at HI is 3.03 .03, angle 270. And it works. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. You want to always use your visual clues. That's the other thing you want to realize, that as you get going on these different settings, you want to use the visual clues. When you get in 3D, however, your visual clues will betray you. That's why you use the at, distance, angle, theta, angle, phi, with theta being the distance in the XY plane and phi being the distance out of the plane. I'll finally finish this last piece off. Same thing. Learning to do this, left, left click, left click, space bar, space bar, C for copy. And you're going to rotate now, this time 109. Escape, escape. Same thing now, left click on the end, left click. And now the distance there, you see it goes first to the distance. The distance of IJ is 7.13. And now you can close out by drawing a line from the end point here to the end point here. And you see what I was talking about right now in terms of it not being exactly um, the way it's shown in the book. I want to finally give you this last piece. You draw perpendicular lines too. So I'm going to go shift, I'm sorry, line, arbitrary from the, I'm sorry, I'm going to do line. From an arbitrary point, shift right click, perpendicular to, offset, and I can pull down for through. Shift, select your object, shift right click, end point here. I can go to here, I left click, 
hit the delete key. I've got four seconds, offset 5.18, and that'll get you to do the rest.